Let's take one more question. From Alex Gill. It's been two, over two years since the Grenfell tragedy. Has the government done enough to tackle unsafe cladding given the recent fire in Bolton? Right. So, uh, just to remind you, for the, if, you're, if you're not familiar, I'm sure all of you are here in this audience, perhaps for people at home. So, this was a fire on Friday that broke out in a six story building. Uh, it was student accommodation. It started on the fourth floor. It's a building that is, that is clad with something called HBL, high pressure laminate cladding. 40 fire engines had to tackle the blaze. It was clearly a terrifying experience for those inside. Um, Robert, also, I've got to ask you, as, as housing secretary, is enough being done? Well, we've done a lot, but we need to do a lot more, and the things we're doing, we need to do even faster, because people are still in homes that are unsafe, and everybody in this country deserves to be able to go to sleep at night thinking that them and their loved ones are safe. And can when you just confirm this uh, report, that owners of flats in high-rise blocks in Greater Manchester, so in this area, wrote mm -hmm. to you for help to find money to strip combustible cladding. It was the same kind of cladding that was around this building. Uh, according to the people who wrote the letter to you, mm. it took three months for an official to reply that the money would not be made available to remove it. Well, I don't know about that particular letter, but obviously I've been in contact with owners of houses and uh, leaseholders all the time. What we've done as a government since the Grenfell Tower disaster was firstly to commission a major review into this, into our building safety system as a country, and that found that it was wanting and that it needed fundamental change. And we're bringing forward legislation. It'll be one of the first acts of the next government if we're lucky enough to be back after the general election. We banned combustible cladding on high-rise buildings, and we put £600 million of your taxpayers' money against getting that cladding off those buildings, beginning with ACM, which was the material that was on the OK, but given that Grenfell we're in Bolton, Tower. I'm sure you'd have thought of that before you came tonight, and this was another kind of cladding, HPL cladding. Do you know, after that fire that happened here, how many buildings are covered in HBL cladding still? We don't have the exact number of buildings. Do you have any number, not even exact, like a rough number. It will be, it will be over a thousand. It will be a very large number of buildings. I would say, first of all, if I may, that there is a fire investigation into what happened in Bolton. It's actually too early to say the exact causes of the fire. The Fire and Rescue Service in Greater Manchester did an absolutely fantastic job. They undoubtedly saved people's lives in that incident. I, I, came, I came up the next day and with the Prime Minister, and we met, uh, he met the Fire and Rescue Service. I later in the evening met students from the university, and it, it's also worth saying that they were absolutely amazing okay. that night. They, the ones that I met when I had dinner with them later in the day, many, of course, were obviously very shell-shocked by what had happened to them. Listen, I'm sure they, they did very well. What, the, the question well. is about what, what whether do, what the government's doing, what, done what enough. What we're doing now... We've heard what you're doing. I'm really sorry, but it's just... Well, a, if I could perhaps say about well, the particular We are going to run out of time okay. if we're not careful. So if you don't mind, you, well, I've given you a long time. Yeah. I'm going to come round the, uh, the rest of the panel. Richard. Well, obviously, there were horrifying images from Bolton that brought back traumatic memories for so many people across the country, not least... Uh, the uh, Grenfell families and survivors who uh, I have met with and they deserve uh, the truth. They deserve to know exactly what caused uh, the fire and what happened uh, on that fateful night. But it goes back to a bigger question, really, about what is government for? We're one of the richest countries in the world and look at the amount of time it's taken not even to properly rehouse the families from Grenfell. It's also the case that, as Robert said, there could be a thousand buildings with this kind of cladding on. The government has asked, not compelled, private owners of these blocks to remove the cladding. Asked, not instructed. And it comes back to the big question. If profit is pursued regardless of any considerations, then you get, for example, cheaper, more dangerous cladding being put on despite health and safety warnings. And we hear these things, don't we, all the time? Health and safety gone mad, too much red tape. I'm going to have to ask to be reasonably brief, Richard, forgive me, because we haven't got much time And left. so I think what happened at Grenfell and what happened in Bolton showcases that in one of the richest countries in the world, things aren't as safe as they should be. Why? Because people aren't put first. Profit is put first. <laughs> Philippa. 
Well, after, after Grenfell, all of the kind of social housing, housing associations were reviewed in Scotland. And, we and this has been something that's been discussed. Um, and really and this is, yeah, this is something that we, we didn't have any of that kind of cladding. But obviously there will be private buildings that had it. But what this comes down to is building regulations have simply not been uh, renewed, not have been reviewed for literally 10, 12 years at a time. And what you are having is desktop review. I'm part of the old party fire safety group in Westminster and we were looking at this kind of thing and it's literally, well, oh, this has got a certificate for this and this has got a certificate. So we put them together and it'll be fine. I'm sorry, you need to take them into a warehouse and set light to them. And yes, it's brilliant <laughs> that, that everybody got out. But can you imagine if that fire had been at three o'clock in the morning with a lot of students who'd maybe been out on the skite and were fast asleep? Imagine the young lives and potential being lost. Watching that was horrific. And I'm sorry, the government, two and a half years on, have to take responsibility and need to actually okay. lift the standards. Sure, I'll reasonably briefly for you. For me, this reeks of a cover-up, potentially on an industrial scale. I think that after Grenfell two and a half years ago, the government made a deliberate decision to only focus on auditing ACM cladding, which is the cladding that was in Grenfell Tower, despite the fact that HPL, for example, is, three, is more combustible and is used three times more than a ACM. And they also made a deliberate decision to only focus on high rises. And one can only deduce from that that it was a deliberate decision to okay. distract from the scale should, of the, we should let, the if, you're, if you're accusing uh, um, the government of a cover-up, Robert, you need to briefly that's, answer that. That's completely untrue. You've got to be led by expert evidence here. And so we created an expert panel of the brightest minds in the field of building safety. And they advised us that our national priority should be the removal of ACM, because that's far and away the most dangerous form of cladding that's on people's buildings today. So that's what we've prioritised, and we've put public money against that. We've also done testing of other types of cladding, and that's exactly the reason why we know what we've just heard tonight about this type of cladding, HPL. And we've also said to the people who own these buildings, remember, the building in Bolton was a private building, it was a commercial building, where a landlord was renting out uh, apartments to students, that they should be taking the advice that we've put into the public domain as a result of the testing process we've done, and they should be doing an individual assessment on this building, and they should make sure that building's safe. And the law we're going to bring in next year will make it a criminal responsibility for an individual to make sure that building is okay. safe. I need so to we're never in this in. situation again. Definitely. Yeah, but I, I, think, I, think, I think the problem is quite a lot of time has elapsed since Grenfell now, and I'm, I'm very sensitive to the fact that probably maybe people who were victims or survivors of that who are watching, but it's quite clear the government hasn't done enough since then. I think there are about 430 tower blocks that had the cladding that the Grenfell Tower had, uh, and I think just three, well, there's still about 318 of them which still have the cladding in them. And in relation to this particular cladding, um, that was used in the building in, in Bolton. One of my colleagues, Angela Smith, she actually raised adding the particular cladding used in the Bolton building to the list of cladding that should be removed from buildings. And Lord Younger, the Conservative Housing Minister, refused to take the action to give the order that that cladding should be removed. And it's unbelievable if you think about it. 2019, after Grenfell, we have had the fire in Bolton, there have been fires in um, Embarking, in Crewe, in Worcester Park, the fact that this is still going on okay. illustrates that the government definitely hasn't done nearly enough on this. OK. I would love to, uh, to get more from you, because I mean, this is your area and this is your town, but I'm afraid we have run out of time, so forgive me.